Hello, Bertrand from Usign here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Usign editor. Um, this is uh, going to be a rather in-depth tutorial on all the little features that, that make up the, the Usign editor. So to launch the editor, you have two, two ways pretty much. You can either launch it from your existing designs here. So you just uh, click on edit um, any of the designs you have created. Um, you can also launch a new one, so that will uh, pretty much create a new template, um, uh, a new design from scratch. So that will be like a blank canvas. Or you can go to the select templates page and um, choose a, a, a design that, that, that fits what you want to do and just click on, on the use button. Um, you can preview it uh, here as well. So just click preview. As you can see, this is a, this is a great little design. Um, so I'm just going to click on use. So when you click on use, it's going to load um, the Usine software um, and, and pretty much allow you to uh, give a name to your, your new design. So it's going to be my lead magnet, so I'll just call it lead magnet for now. And then click on save and that's pretty much going to add this template to your, um, to your Usine account. Alright, so um, quite a few things going on here, so um, I'll, I'll show you um, the basic and, and, and how it works. So I'll probably start with the coolest feature I think in Usine, which is the preview. So it's that little eye you can see here in the, um, in the top right hand corner and when you click on preview, it, it instantly generates um, a, a beautiful preview of your design and, and that applies to um, all the design types. So it's something to remember because um, even myself, you know, sometimes I forget that I can do a preview for pretty much any of these designs here. Um, another one that is really cool is the, the web banner preview. So I'll probably try to show you that now. Okay, so I'll just change the, the I just um, select, select, clicked here and went to web banner. So obviously it kind of messed up my layout a bit because it's not the same dimensions but I just wanted to show you the preview so I click on preview here and I can preview how my web banner would look on a website so really important to remember um, the preview applies to all the design types so you want you want to use it um, so let me get back to the ebook cover and, and, and show you um, how Usine works so the first thing you notice is that there's this area here. So this is pretty much your assets library, you know, where you'll have access to text and images and your uploads and so on. But for now, I'm going to I'm going to hide it, you know, because I, I don't want it to confuse us. So we just click on this um, left arrow here and it kind of clears the canvas. And I really like this view when I want to get focused on, on, on what I do. Um, so starting from the top here, um, you have a little home button. So if you click on that, you go back to the dashboard. Um, obviously, you might want to save your design before um, you go back to the dashboard, but we, we do have an auto save, uh, an automatic save feature. So, uh, well, if, if you go there by mistakes, then you, you, you should be able to retrieve your design. Um, next here, we have the design type and the design dimensions, right? So if I click on that little right arrow, I can see the dimension. So this is an ebook cover. Um, it's actually different from a Kindle cover in the sense that this is formatted for the web, you know, for also, so it's like kind of a, an internet ebook cover. And so you can see the dimensions here and you can switch to any other design types from here. Um, pretty much just by you know going through this and um, selecting what design types you want um, if you want to switch to a custom size you can do so as well you just click on custom size and when you are on the custom size um, um, size or dimensions you can just click here and, and modify the dimension so I'll, I'll just say let's say I want to go 400 um, times five for seven. I'm gonna, gonna, I'm not gonna change it too much because I don't want to mess it up. And I'll just press the Enter key on my dashboard. And as you can see, it resized it, but it wasn't really dramatic. So I'll let me redo it again. So now I'm at 200 times five for seven. So as you can see, it's 
um, really easy to resize. I'll go back to my original size. Or I can use the crop button here. So that's just another way, another way to resize. But remember, you need to be on the custom size um, option to be able to use the crop and the resize. Um, all the others, like you see, if I go on the ebook covers, um, I'm not able to edit the size here. It's going to be locked, you know, because we want this size um, to be exact, you know, to be able to show you the, this kind of preview. Um, but again, if you go to the custom size, then you can either edit here and press enter or click on crop. And then you can just move things around and, you know, crop it the way, the, the way, the way you want, pretty much. Um, and you can see the dimensions here as you crop. So that's 337 width, 244 height. All right, so um, pretty easy to use. Let me go back to ebook cover. That's really um, what I want to do here. Um, the next option here is um, it pretty much allows you to kind of extend the space of your of the design area. It's what we call um, the Canva. All right, so. Right now, um, by default, um, this uh, feature basically hides any element that goes outside the canvas. So you can see my 100 here. I'm going to move it here of the canvas and it's hidden, right? So um, in most cases, it's handy because it allows you to really keep the focus on the canvas. But sometimes you maybe want to get creative or or, or you have some very large designs that go behind the canvas. So you might be, you might want to see what's happening in there, right? So you just click on that and it's going to show all the ele elements which are, which are of the canvas. Um, this won't affect your download. When, when you download something, it will only download the canvas area. But um, this feature is really, you know, like I say, if you have very large element that goes over the canvas, or um, if you want to have some more images and play with things around the Canva, right? Um, so again, just click here, hide show. So in this case, I'm hiding it. So I'm not gonna be able to see it, but if I just show, uh, it's here, right? So very useful feature. Um, again, if you have elements which are bigger than the Canva, you want to turn it on to be able to see, to see what's happening. Um, the next option here is the save button, so that's the little disk. Um, and, and you have two options. So if you create a new design, obviously at some point you're, you, you're going to want to save it. So just click on, on, on the save button and it's going to open um, a window like this. So I just use save as because I think I already saved that. Um, and, and just enter a name. Um, if you, if you want to create, like if you're working on one version of this design, let's say in this version I'm doing, um, I'm going to do some split test. So this version is the orange version and I have a, a red or something else, a green version as well, right? So uh, I would probably just do this and then click on save as and I call it like lead magnet green, right? So. So the save as is, is kind of another way to clone and duplicate um, designs. Um, so let me go back to my initial color. I think it was... Uh, um, no, it wasn't that. I'll just pick back my orange, okay. All right, so um, then you have the preview. So again, the preview, very useful and applies to all these design types. So if you are in Facebook, if you, if you are uh, uh, working on the Facebook cover and you click on, fa on, on the preview, it's going to show you how your Facebook cover is going to look inside Facebook. Um, similarly, if you're working on, uh, on print, something like business cards or flyers, you click on preview, it's going to, use, it's going to show you a realistic mock-up of your actual print material so it's 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 very cool never you know uh, underestimate or forget that little button here um, next thing is the download button so there's actually two two possible types of downloads um, you can download the preview so as you can see i just clicked on preview first and then if i click on download preview it's going to actually download um, this image here um, as it is so it's going to download the actual preview um, 
but you can also download the uh, design right so just this design as it is here and for that you click on download and you know it's gonna usually it's gonna take the name of the um, um, the design you're working on and you can just uh, save it to your desktop and, and that's pretty much it um, the downloaded file is is a PNG right a transparent PNG so I'll show you how to turn off the background in the sec in a second and here in the top right you have your uh, your your user panel link so you, could, you can go back to the dashboard to your my designs page um, you can visit the support desk or you can log out um, here in the bottom of the screen you have a feedback button so that's a well a really cool little feature we built in you just put your email you put a message you can capture an area of the screen and just let us know anything like this is basically it's like this uh, it's like a direct line to the development team you know um, like this message when you send them they go directly to the development teams and they go directly to myself as well so we can really see you know if you're having any issues if you are experiencing a bug you know you can let us know via the feedback button that's just another way to get in touch um, and here in the top uh, in the bottom right sorry and corner you have the zoom button so when you click on the zoom button you can see there's a slider here so just click uh, and slide it up and it basically allows you to zoom and get be a better uh, get a, a better view of, of your design uh, and then you notice there's this like red square inside the zoom area so if you click on it and then drag it you can move across your design so very cool um, very handy little feature and if you want to go back to the um, if you want to zoom out and, and go back to the normal view just click on that square icon and here we go you're back on okay so that's the zoom the zoom is really useful usually for long designs like if you're working on an infographics or a sales page or, or something that's a bit lengthy you know you're gonna want to use the, the zoom or if you're struggling to select something like it's too small or you know you're not able to really um, select what you want to select um, just click on the um, on, on the zoom button and, and from there you can you can zoom in all right so so next let's let's look into um, some of the basic controls um, so I'm gonna turn off uh, turn that that uh, mask off now so that I can see what's off my canvas um, so I really want to show you how um, how the user interface works um, so we have several elements here so as you can see it's familiar you know drag and drop kind of kind of interface um, what is um, not so familiar I guess is um, our, our, our way to display the control options related to each specific element that you you select um, so you can see here we have a control bar and this bar um, only appears when you select something um, it disappears if you click on the canvas right so I just clicked on the canvas and my my option bar um, for, for for this text layer is, is totally gone um, and it's actually um, relevant to um, what kind of element you select so if I select the background you can see the options are different here if I select the text the options are different again um, but before I get deeper into that let me show you some tricks of the um, of this toolbar so basically you can move it around so if you click on any area in the top here near the um, editing text um, you can move it around so that's well very handy if you want to um, organize your workspace and if you click on the blue arrow here you can minimize it as well so again you know if you want to have you know your, your mind clears and, and not get confused you can you can easily minimize it um, and then what you get um, first are the editing options so the editing options are pretty much universal to um, whatever you select um, obviously now we're selecting a text layer um, so you will have text related options here um, but at the top you have the generic editing options that will be undo redo um, you can delete um, a layer um, you can duplicate it so if you can duplicate or just you know create a, a duplicate here um, you can also uh, show a grid so 
like when you get um, when you want to get really really precise and and kind of measure things and and, and make sure you you have a perfect uh, symmetry you know just click on the grid icon and the grid allows you to um, have these lines here that you can position um, pretty much how you want to to make sure you know um, your design is is what you expect right so you can just position these lines the blue lines you can move them around and you know let's say you want to have like all this text on on the blue line then you can just uh, move things around you know to make sure it's on the blue line so that's kind of advanced but it's good to know that it's here and if you click it again it just disappears um, next you have the opacity so the opacity applies to most ele elements like text um, shapes or images so you just click on opacity and then you can just turn it on and turn um, kind of slide it to um, choose which opacity level is, is, is good for you um, then you have the color so the colors the color option usually apply to text layers and, uh, and shapes you know so like this text here I can just um, click on the color button and um, here I can choose the colors from the color um, picker or I can enter my own color manually here or if I want I can pick a color on the screen that's probably my favorite things um, my favorite feature with the color picker is that you can really easily uh, pick a color that's on a design and, and you know use it to make it match your brand really um, so in this case um, you know, I could pick the black here but I'm probably yeah, I'll keep it black because it makes more sense here. Um, <clears throat> next, you have the layering options. Um, so sometimes you will notice some objects are on top of others. Like you can see here, for instance, this um, text is on top of this, um, this shape in the background, right? So maybe sometimes you want to move things around. Um, this is particularly useful if you are trying to reach a layer that is behind something you know so you might want to move things around so for instance um, let's say i wanted to uh, for some reason move this layer to the front i just click on bring to front and you know it just goes it just went on top of the the other text layer and i'm gonna send it uh, to the back and you can also bring forward so that's just like uh, moving like one step up from the other layer and, and send backward is like one step up then you have uh, bring to front and send to back so uh, layering really useful here and then the next thing you have is the um, the centering um, option so again very handy if you want to quickly center any element just click there and as you can see it just it just centered it horizontally according to the canva very cool and you have also the vertical centering um, does the same but in a vertical way and next uh, let me move uh, let me try this one um, you can flip um, text and images so that's probably more useful for images usually you know if you have a, an image of someone that's looking to the right and you want to make him uh, make it look like he's looking to the left you know you just click on flip horizontally or flip vertically and, and that will do the job and you have the lock layer um, option here, so it's 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 useful sometimes to um, lock a layer if you're you know if you're happy with your design and you don't want to mess things up and you know you're working on new elements on top of background elements, um, so you just click on lock layer and then you know your layer won't won't move again. Um, as you can see, the lock is 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 activated here, and if I if I click here, I can unlock it. All right, so that's that's pretty much. Um, how it works. Um, I kind of lost the the order of my design here. Let me try to restore it a bit. There you go. So um, next we have the the relevant text option. So again, we are on the text layer now. So we're just focus focusing on text at the moment. I'll show you the other um, kind of options you can get. Um, so first you have the font style. So you have a lot of, you have a few font families here. You have grunge, handwritten, impact. Um, my favorite font family uh, personally is sans serif. You know, we have some really cool fonts here. Um, like this one I'm using here, which is 
um, League Gothic, I think. Um, so I usually go with League Gothic and Free Sense. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I usually stick to the same font, and uh, I guess that's yeah, like on, on, on a branding, um, on the branding side as well. It's better to, you know, know what are your brand fonts and just stick with with, with the fonts you you usually use. And you can also access your your system font. So that's the fonts which are on your desktop. You know, so you just click on system fonts and it's going to load all the fonts which are installed in your computer. So again, very handy. Um, then you can uh, control the size from here, but I would usually um, just use the, the handles here to, to modify the size. I don't really use the, the input here, but you can. Um, you also have bold, italic and underline um, for certain fonts, not for all the fonts. And then you can align left, align right, and so on. Um, so that's pretty much the fonts. And something else I could show you is the um, um, the text behavior. So how it behaves when you move it around. So you basically have these handles here. So if you click on the, um, the dot in in the at the top here, you can um, rotate um, your 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 text layer. Um, if you click on, on this here, you can increase the size. And if you hold the shift key while clicking, um, you can modify the, si modify the size without constraining the proportions. Um, I won't do it here because it won't look good. But yeah, you can, you can do that with the if you hold the shift key. Um, here we go. You, know, you can just uh, resize without proportion. I usually don't use that feature a lot because you know, I find that when you modify proportions, um, you know, usually it doesn't look um, that good. And the other thing is that um, sometimes you want your text to be on one line or two lines. You want to organize it like maybe differently. So the way you do that is you use this, uh, the sidebar um, arrows here. So as you can see, I'm on the, the, the side of this handle. I'm going to click on it and then drag it. And as you can see, I can, I can change all my text is displayed so this is very very handy it's something you should definitely um, you know use for, for formatting your your text um, all right so i think for the text we are good so let's look into another option now is the background so notice that if i click on the background here i have another menu that appears um, I have less editing options because obviously I'm not going to duplicate the background or delete the background or, or you know, center the background. Um, so I just have a couple of options here. Um, but then um, I can also change like some of the background settings. So for instance, I can change the background color um, very easily. So I'll just, uh, you know, click on, on the background color and choose what, what works for me. And I think white works better. Um, I can also add the gradient, so the gradient, very simple to use, pick one color, um, pick a secondary color, and you get a gradient. Um, I can have a pattern, um, this is a kind of feature that we've been working on, so that's probably going to change a lot in, in the next, um, um, for the beginning of, of 2016, um, but basically you can choose different patterns here, and, and then um, then you can customize the colors of the pattern. So you, you get a lot of, of, uh, of options. And the last option is no background. So you just click on none. And, uh, and basically what that does, does is that it removes the background um, totally. So that, that becomes a, a transparent PNG, right? So, you know, if you're uploading your image, you know, for the web and, uh, and, and you already have a background on your website, then you don't want to add another background here. So just use the none feature and that turns it into a transparent PNG, right? But I'll go back to solid for the sake of this example. Um, so again, to do that, I just clicked on background first and then um, I get all these options. So that menu, menu is really contextual. Now let me click on a shape. So if I click on this shape here, again, I have other options. I have my editing options, but I can also change the color of the shapes very easily. So. I'll just uh, hover on um, the color I like, and here we go. I changed the color of the shape. So as you can see, this menu you have to get used to it, but it's kind of a, it's it's really clever. You know, it's really 
um, it really works you know to um, to suit your your workflow um, so I'm gonna restore that color here that was a good one um, I think I totally messed up that order um, right okay so we're kind of back on, on our design and um, and that's that's about it um, I guess for the um, this menu bar here um, that's that that's really how it works and now we can go into the actual the assets library um, which is you know where you will get um, most of the assets that you had to the canva um, so let me delete the text layer here so that we have a better um, better view here so by default the default asset selected is the text um, so you have different types of text here you have a body text for instance that's more like a paragraph and as you can see here um, my that text layer is too big for the canvas so I can't see all of it so I'll just turn on uh, the off canvas element and here we go I can see it and I'll just use that to resize it and, uh, uh, and make it fit what I do um, so we already saw um, the text options here so again you can change the font the size and the color and so on um, so you have different types of, of text so you can just choose what works best and, and then you have a lot of images so if I go into academics and sports um, we have these um, kind of uh, well, academics related images so let me try to move things up so that I can I can um, have an image here um, so what could be good here um, well the book the book is probably a good choice so let's go for this uh, let's go for this book actually because these are pretty cool like they look really simple but these are very efficient if you see like a company like HubSpot you know and the free ebooks they give um, they always use very very simple like filigram images like this so these are these are very cool uh, and what I would usually do with those is um, well, first you can change the size um, then you can change the color of that as well right you just uh, well, just pick any color you know it's it's, it's incredibly easy uh, I'm gonna pick the same color as this and and what I can do is send it to the back and then uh, change the opacity you know so you can do this kind of like little very subtle things um, very subtle effects and um, let me see how that looks in the preview actually uh, as you can see it's pretty cool it could be better but you know you get you get the idea um, so these images are, are, are very uh, very handy so let me just try to grab that I'll just move things around here and um, I'll probably turn the opacity back on and I'll see if I can move it somewhere else. I think my text is too big on this page, so I don't really have any, any space to put anything. There we go. There you go. Right, so that's, that, that's the image library. So, well, feel free to browse through that, you know, and, and look at um, all there is and, and see what work, what could work in, in, in your business. Um, we have some backgrounds here as well. So um, these are kind of textures, so you can just um, load them and, well, move them to the back, obviously, and then, you know, just resize them and you know, make, make them work. So this is another example of where the... Um, um, the show off canvas element would be useful. So if I click this, I hide, uh, I click on it, then I'm just hiding all the extra background, you know, that's showing. So it's kind of, that's kind of how you, you use it in, in a workflow. And again, I do my preview, I have my background that appears, you know, it's actually starting to look pretty nice. Um, then I have some business elements. So just go through these and, you know, um, try to find you know something that, that that matches what you're doing we have a good variety of elements here um, food and travel um, we have some icons and again on all of these um, icons which are provided um, inside Usign. so first they are they are commercial free like we created them so that you can use them and secondly you can always change the color so again it's 
it's it's incredibly powerful because when you can you know have like a consistent color you know for your brand and it, it's it's really cool um you have industries um, nature objects occasion people um shapes um shapes are really useful um for like doing this kind of things here you can see here this is a shape this is a i think a square shape so like this is what, what a shape would look like so then if you want to resize it to kind of fit what you do um, you want to hold the shift key um, to resize it without constraining proportions so as you can see here i can freely resize it if i don't hold the shift key it's going to resize it with um, like constraining the proportion so that's probably not what you want to do for shapes you want to freely re um, um, change them and again you can you can change the color in, in just a click you know so um, yeah that, that's the shape so pretty handy for for doing a lot of different things uh, we use them a lot in, in the templates we create in in using um, then you have the technology elements um, these are very good as well so you have the like kind of empty uh, uh, macbook um, sorry iMac frame um, so you know if you have a product you can add a screenshot of your product inside it and you know like these are these are very cool um, so you have lots of them um, like high Mac iPhone and, and MacBook hair frames and, and and so on so it's uh, it's very cool All right so then you have the web elements um, again um, really generic stuff that you can use um, you know for your business um, the text and we have some integration like the icon finder integration so that gives you access I think to about 300,000 images from icon finder it's, it's just huge you know so whatever icon you may look for um, I'm well I'm out of idea now but let's say I'm looking for a YouTube icon I just type YouTube click enter and you know I get all the relevant um, icons here and you know I can just add them um, to my uh, Canva in, in one click and, 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 and basically you can also look at the um, um, the offer page right so if you click on this i icon like info here it's going to take you to the offer page on icon finder um, so you always want to do that to check the attribution like this all these images are commercially uh, free to use like so we you know we talked with the icon finder team and we made sure we, we get you only the images that you can use but some may require attribution um, so you always want to check that and if they do require attribution just just add a page on your website that says you know credits or attribution and, and list you know all the people that you've you you've used the design you know you can you can you can list them here um, that's that's what we do um, next thing is next integration is icon finder so um, that's again a huge integration I think you have access to like 300 or 400,000 extra images I, I I can't even I don't even count anymore but you know you just you just get a huge amount of images and as you can see we kind of have, have a, like a selection curation process in place so these are some of the um, uh, the one that we regularly create um, or the other option is to do a search so you know you'll do something like a, uh, like a search for business elements and you have all kinds of, of, of images you can use here and, and that would bring me actually to my next um, uh, next tutorial so uh, let me just try to find a suitable image um, I need an image of someone with a background behind them so that I can um, remove the background All right so just bear with me I think that this yeah, that guy here All right so you see this guy here so let's say we wanted to remove the background from him from from here and that's something that you know you'll probably uh, you know have to do at some point you know it's like you know you have an image of yourself but you need to remove the background and just keep yourself um, so we have that built in into user so once you have selected an image again from our contextual menu you can see that there's well there's two new options here there's the crop option so I'll actually show you that first so the crop is simple you go in you select the shape you want to crop so I'm gonna go for the round 
um, then you click on crop and it's all right so basically you have um, well as you can see it's really easy to crop and and this image has been added to my library as well I'm not, I'm not sure if you noticed but there was a save to library tick here so I'm going to show you what that means um, just now if you go in uploads um, the uploads um, tab has all the image you have uploaded to Usine or, or you have decided to save to your library so as you can see I just cropped an image and it's it's in my library so anytime I come back to Usine I'll have access to to this image and uh, while I'm here I'll also show you the upload feature so you just click on upload image and then you can select a file or you can drag any uh, image from your desktop and drop it here and it will upload and stay in your image library until you delete it you know you can delete them from here but as you can see here like we stock a lot of images that you know we often reuse like we have logos um, ebook covers and so on so you can you can easily um, you know save all your important brand assets you know like your picture um, your logo um, maybe uh, a, particular, uh, a particular kind of texture of background that you always use uh, you can you can easily um, save that into here but let me go back to the uh, to the topic I kind of lost track here um, so that's the crop right so click on an image um, select an image then click on here crop and it will crop it so again it's a contextual menu so these options you won't see them in the if you're selecting a text layer for instance as you can see here um, so right so let me delete that and next um, I have um, I'm gonna remove the background like I wanted to do so so well, we're getting there um, so right so the next option is called erase background so when you select an image you see this kind of um, um, symbol here you just click on erase background and it's gonna load the background eraser tool which is incredibly cool um, I'll show you how that works now so first you want to select the area that you want to keep and you don't have to be extra precise with that so I'll just kind of make it like this I'll just want to select his, his legs and um, his left side here and, and, and like that so that that should do it so first you select roughly the area you want to keep and then you select the area you want to exclude so now I just click I just selected the, um, um, the red brush okay and I just click on like again you're, you don't have to be really precise on that you can be really rough like you see this is, these are the two you know uh, the two strokes I did and it just removed pretty much everything from there uh, and then you can get you know more into it and get closer and if you can see on the right hand side of my screen you have a live preview of you know what what you're gonna get you know so again I just clicked here one time two times couple times you know um, there we go there we go and I think we are pretty good like if I you know, if I wanted to be really precise I can improve on that but I think that's kind of okay oh yeah his head is kind of missing a chunk here so just gonna fix that for him and, and here we go as, as you can see that was incredibly easy but then you know maybe it's not perfect and you really want to get into it um, but usually like the rough um, like removing a, a background from an image like this just takes less than a minute but if you want to really get into it and get more precise you can always zoom in um, and, uh, and really you know go for you know those hard to find corner and, and so on and, and really like kind of a uh, finish things but I think that you know is pretty okay so I'm just gonna click on done and it's gonna show is it's gonna generate a, well, a version of him without the background so that's well that feature with all the rest <laughs> really makes the design really really incredible it's it's incredibly cool and I'm actually starting to like this cover you know believe it or not so I'll just click on preview again because I like to preview things and you know looks very cool uh, it looks incredibly professional and 
as you can see I was just uh, kind of messing around with that um, all right so that, that was the background removal feature so again when you have an image selected just click on erase background um, next thing we can show is stock unlimited so that's another image library um, it's mainly like stock graphic and vector graphics um, it's, it's it's really cool again you can just um, access any of their images from here um, just type uh, your keyword and, and you know you have a lot of stuff like all kinds of all kinds of icons and graphics and these are mainly like cartoon like graphics you know like vectors right um, you have your uploads folder so again this is where all the image you upload will will stay you know so it, it's really um, well it's really important to upload when you get started to upload a few of the image you often use like I say your logo your profile picture um, your signature you know like um, the background you always use like this background um, I'm using in the back here is pretty cool you know so you know if, if I was if I was often using that in my business I would probably upload it to my library here so that I can quickly access it um, next option is the filters um, so the filter is pretty easy you just uh, it, it just had the filter on top of an image so for instance if I wanted that image to be gray I'll just click on the grayscale filter and that's it you know I got it in, in black and white now so very cool very easy and you have a few different uh, filter effects here um, so you can just um, you know choose choose what works for you um, and then the last one is, is the save group so I'll show you how that works so the idea with save groups is that sometimes uh, you have like design elements that often come back together and you might want to reuse them in another um, in another kind of design or graphic so let's say for instance that um, I just move things around because I think this guy is is just very cool uh, right okay all right so let's say that my brand is kind of a this picture uh, of a book and this picture of myself I mean it's not myself but let's say it was myself so what you can do um, if you hold the shift key on your keyboard then if you click on another layer you can group things together right so that's very useful move things around and you know you can um, obviously uh, delete the group or, or, or move the group around but what if I want to I'm, I'm often using this group of elements because it's my signature it's you know it, it's something I often reuse in my designs that's made of several elements so I can just save that so what I do now is that you see again in the contextual menu now we have a group button so I click on group and after clicking on group uh, well I can ungroup it but that's not what I want to do I want to save the group so I click on save group and it's gonna add it to my uh, saved groups library um, so so that means that anytime I need these two elements like this is very 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 useful for branding um, again it could be your logo it could be a picture of you and uh, and your tagline you know that's something you, you want to use these um, these groups to kind of have things that you often use in your business um, handy right so um, so if I just delete that one I can just like any time I can I can I can pull back these two images together you know if I'm doing uh, I'm gonna do my Twitter cover and let's say on my Twitter cover actually I could do that now right so let, let's go into a Twitter cover right and uh, we're almost at the end of it if that's a bit if we're a bit long I'm um, sorry we're gonna get there soon right so that's my Twitter cover here so obviously it's not the same dimension so I'm gonna have to kind of uh, improvise on something here um, there you go the background get this how to sell right so let's say I wanted to use again that picture of me and the book so I just click on that and here we go it's in my save group so that's that's how easy it is and again I can do my preview to see how it will actually look on Twitter um, so that's the last feature I really um, wanted to tell you about 
and um, that's pretty much it for your design that's pretty much um, all you can do uh, all you should do with it um, and, 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 and all the options and the tools um, like I, I think it's, it's pretty much very intuitive but just remember that this menu is contextual um, um, you can use also some keyboard shortcuts that I could mention so there's obviously the shift key um, if you hold the shift key and select another element you can group things together um, this gives you access to the save group features um, you can also do like control J to duplicate an element so I just did a, a control J here so I just duplicated that group okay so um, that's control and J or command J if you're on Mac um, you can also use the arrows on your keyboards to move things around so right now as you can see I'm moving with my I'm, I'm pressing the up arrow on my keyboard and if I hold the shift key at the same time it just goes uh, much faster like it goes as you can see it goes fast this is with uh, the shift key on and this is with the shift key off right so arrows are really useful to move stuff around I usually uh, I use them a lot to kind of get precise on, on where I want to move things and um, that's pretty much it for the tour of the user and software um, and again if you have any questions feel free to get in touch with us thanks a lot for watching